The following is a local resident producer's program. The program content is the sole responsibility of the producer and does not necessarily reflect the views or policies of Oshkosh Media, the City of Oshkosh, or Time Warner Cable. Gosh, I'm your host, Cheryl Hens. Um, I don't know if you've ever really thought much about basement businesses, but um, we have had a number of basement businesses here in the city of Oshkosh um, many years ago. We're talking like the 18th century, um, and maybe the f most famous basement business that you can think of or relate to would have been Cheers, the, the bar um, in that uh, show that was named Cheers and I think that was the name of the bar too and you had to go down a stairwell to enter that business. Um, so that was a basement business but joining me tonight to talk about the basement businesses that we've had here in Oshkosh over the years is uh, Julie Johnson and she is the author of Oshkosh Down Under Basement Businesses and the Tunnel from the Hotel Athern is it Athern? Athern, okay. correct. To the Grand Opera House, and so we're happy to be here. I'm happy to be here. It's always <laughs> fun to talk about it. Yep, I, we've been looking forward to this for a number of months. Great. We were supposed to do this a few months back, and we had a terrible snowstorm, right. and we called off the cans. We called off the show, and it's not very often that I cancel, but we had to that night. It was yep, just it was ugly. Bad. It was ugly. So I'm here. You're here, and I'm happy right. we're both here tonight talking about this. So in the next hour, we're going to be exploring basement businesses, what the city was like back in the 1800s and beyond. Um, we'll be learning about a tunnel system that used to exist in the city, why it was there, how things have changed over the years, and um, we're even going to touch on um, some rumors about ghosts. And sure, so why, so, not? <laughs> why so not? People should just sit back, uh, maybe pop some popcorn and relax, and this is going to be a fascinating hour. Uh, even if you don't live in Oshkosh, it's going to be interesting. So, Now, the book that you wrote was published in 2002. Correct. And you told me it took you 12 years it did. to write that book. So you started in 1990. You're right. What, and I know you're not from Oshkosh. So what prompted you to write a book? You live here now. I do. You're, you're a business owner here in the city and a co-owner, I should say. Mm -hmm. And what, but what prompted someone from Pulaski to write a, a book about the tunnels and, and the history of downtown Oshkosh? Sure. Well, I came here in 1980 because of a boyfriend, right, from Pulaski, Wisconsin. And he was what uh, uh, they called back then a townie. And I don't even know if they use that term anymore. I haven't heard it for a yeah, long time. Yeah, we still do. Do we? Sure. Well, uh, of course, born, Townie means he was born and raised here, and his whole family is pretty much from here as well. And it was him, it was my, uh, and I later married him, it was my first husband that showed me uh, certain areas uh, around Oshkosh that had these uh, mysterious stairwells that went down into the sidewalk, and there would be three doors down there. Sometimes there'd be a window, you could look into it, you know, that type of thing. And I was absolutely fascinated by it, but I, uh, I didn't really go beyond that with it. And uh, uh, many years later, uh, at my job, we were talking about these tunnels one day, and of course I knew a little bit about it and heard the rumors about it that from the Opera House of the Atherton Hotel and other tunnels that existed. And I, I said, you know, I'm just going to set out to see if this is true or not. And it really turned into a huge adventure really one of the best things I ever did in my life. Really? Yes, for yeah. sure. It was so much fun. 
Um, I just spoke to a college class at our university here at UWO, and I think the thing that surprised me about myself was that I, I had an interest in something I had no idea I had an interest yeah. in, <laughs> which was history. Yeah. I really wasn't into history in high school or anything like that. And so this, uh, this whole topic just fascinated me. And uh, I, at the time, I was working at Janssen's restaurant, so I knew a, 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 a huge variety of people, from rich to poor and everybody in between. So I started talking to people about it. And uh, boy, it just w led from one person to the next, to the next, to the next. And the other thing that really fascinated me was I went to um, our Oshkosh Public Museum in our, our Oshkosh Public Library, and I asked them about it. And they both felt that tunnels didn't exist in Oshkosh, but they couldn't give me a reason why they didn't. They had no proof that they didn't. Okay. So I said, well, if they don't have proof that they didn't, that doesn't really mean that they didn't exist. So right, right. I, I, th that was part of the reason why I set out to prove that uh, did, they, did they exist or didn't they exist yeah. was one of the big pushes to, to investigate. And then I started talking to business owners who own some of these areas and found that they were very willing to let me go in and see and investigate and whatever. And I, I was shocked by that. <laughs> I didn't think anybody let me in to see anything. And so that just led from one thing to another. Um, at the time I was doing this, I was, I was, a, I was single. So I had all the time in the world to do it between work and whatever. I could stay up late, get up early, do whatever I wanted to do. And uh, it was just really a lot of fun. The, the best part about it is I met so many people. And everybody in Oshkosh was just wonderful to talk to. And, yeah. and rarely was anybody rude about anything or didn't want me to see anything or whatever. And it was really a lot of fun. I met so many wonderful people. It was great, great, great experience. So you decided to start putting your thoughts and your findings on paper. And, you know, there's, there is so much. And as you talk to different people, you're learning more and more and more. Right. And how did you, you know, if, if you're anything like me when you're writing, you, you start writing something and then something else comes up and you have to go down this other path Correct, yeah. to investigate yes, it before you, you can finish right. what you already started. And, you know, you can get pulled and taken right. in a lot of different directions. And right. I bet with something like this, you were probably being pulled in half a dozen directions or more, I would think, at any one time. Yeah, I mean, I've done a, um, I've done a lot of study on the opera house at our, our Grand Opera House. And that, ta that in particular takes you everywhere. Sure. I finally had to write a paper ab about it. I did a big speech on the Grand Opera House. But the, the hardest part of it was where do I start with it? Because it just, there were so many, so many diverse avenues to go down. It was hard, really hard to pull it in and start somewhere. And I finally just felt started somewhere where I felt was the most likely thing to do and, and did it. Uh, yeah, this too, it, it took so long to research and write the book because it, it took a long time to really get enough information on the tunnels to really write about. And uh, that took a great deal of research because there were a lot of rumors and this and that. Yep. And, you know, you want to pull it in so that, you know, there's fact to the rumors or the stories or whatever, yep. uh, documentation on this or that or whatever. The tunnel from the Grand to the Opera House was the hardest thing to really write about because mm -hmm. I, I had some eyewitness testimonies about it. But there's nothing written anywhere that they that it existed, uh, so to speak. So like a map or sure. a fire insurance map or different things yeah. where that did exist with some of these other things, yeah. uh, without some of the other basement businesses. But um, I didn't know anything about writing. <laughs> <laughs> and um, after I started collecting a, a great deal of information, I, I realized I had to write about it. I had to do something with it. And I literally just sat down one day and just started, started. And um, if, if you think your brain can't hurt from thinking too much, it can't. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know, forget. right? It's like my brain would just hurt because you really had to really pull yourself in. It was a great experience though. It's like, you know, you're doing something you never dreamed you could ever really do. Sure. Somebody always said, you're gonna write a book one day and say, you gotta be kidding me, you know? <laughs> but yeah. uh, but I did it and you, you, there's, it's amazing. I learned how amazing it is to to realize what you can do. Sure, absolutely. You know, uh, and then that just once I had the book finished, I I really felt that I could do anything. Yeah, 
Okay. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, um, great. And, and we're going to talk about the tunnel system and some yes. of the other tunnels that have been rumored to be in the city and whether or not those rumors are true. Um, this book focuses primarily on the downtown area. Correct. Um, and I think that's for the most part where any tunnels were. Um, right. There are a couple that were sort of outside of what one would normally consider downtown and we'll talk about those too and we've got some pictures that we're going to show a little bit later but I have to imagine that you were feeling pretty overwhelmed many times during the course of mm -hmm. of this 12 years and you know and and now I have to say that you've written the book we're going to talk later if you're going to write another one or not but um, now you are considered an Oshkosh historian mm -hmm. And um, so I think that's great, too, because, you know, people are dying off. Right. We lost Clarence. Right. Everybody called him Inky. Um, right. But, and I'm not sure where that, um, where that nickname came from. He's been on my, before he passed, of course, he'd been on the show once or twice. But uh, Clarence Youngworth, Inky right. Youngworth, was probably the foremost historian in the city right. um, and there are some other folks um, Ron LaPointe who used to teach uh, I can't remember if he taught at West or North but he's written three or four books right. on the city um, I have one at home I don't know who wrote it but it was when the city turned a hundred years old mm -hmm. and that's got a lot of history to right. it um, and then there was another book, and I can't remember who wrote that. I have a copy at home. And that was just on the school system right. yes. in the city. Yes. And so now this is a compilation of a lot of different things, talking about the tunnels and basement businesses. And mm -hmm. so, you know, you put all that together, and you've got a really good picture of what the city of Oshkosh is. But you're one of the historians now. Yeah, there's been a, thank you, there's been a lot of books written on Oshkosh and a lot of souvenir books put out through the many, many years from the 1800s through the turn of the century and now this century as well. We're still doing it. Um, our founding fathers, if you want to call them that, were um, uh, very proud of, of the city and um, went through a great, great deal. Uh, that were, you know, a lot of us are unaware of. Um, my book, Oshkosh Down Under, I, I'm proud of it because it's a it's a, a type of history that was never told before. Mm -hmm. And I could write 10, 15 books on topics that have never been talked about in Oshkosh. The Opera House is one of them. Absolutely over-the-top fascinating. Utterly, utterly fascinating. Sure. Uh, it's, it's our most historic building in the city. Thousands and thousands of people have performed there and passed through there. Sure. And uh, talking about ghosts, you know, that's a, a very, um, just because of that fact alone, um, of the, the, the amazing amount of people that came through there uh, and the things that were performed on the stage were incredible. People have no clue at all today what was performed on that stage sure um, in you know whatever but um, well we'll talk about fun. that a little yeah, bit later on really fascinating um, because the grand is it has, certainly you know right. from its very beginning mm -hmm. to its heyday to when the city had to you know go ahead and come up with the money to refurbish right. it renovate right. it um, and Joe Furlow has done a great job right. with yes, getting has. wonderful performances mm -hmm. in there and um, he's been on the show countless times over the years. Right. And um, it, it's something that we should be very proud of um, and honored to have in, in the city. I was so proud that the city, again, stepped up. Stepped up and yep. said, yes, we want to keep our opera house. Yeah. I mean, that's amazing. Sure. It's an amazing, amazing place. Yep, yep. So, so this, um, as I said, this your book focuses primarily on a certain section of downtown. Mm -hmm. If you had to uh, describe it, Julie, by the streets that border the section we're primarily focusing on, what streets would those be? Well, first of all, um, our, our downtown was the main business district, district of the city. So um, there was no west side. That was all farmland. Um, there surely was the, the south side. They also had their type of business district. It wasn't quite as, right. I don't want to say sophisticated, but um, more industrial on, mm -hmm. on that side. And of course, all the neighborhoods had their grocery stores and 
taverns and different things like that. But um, cities were, that's how cities were built. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because most cities were small, unless you're getting into Milwaukee, Chicago, and cities like that. So, yes, the main business district was the downtown. Uh, we're talking, um, the center of the city is where the Grand Opera House and the old Atherton Hotel sat. Once the Atherton Hotel was built, they considered that the, the, the pride of the city and now this is the business district. So the Grand Opera House, which is still, we still call it Opera House Square today, uh, pretty much. They did back then, they called it Hicks Square, Monument Square. Um, and those businesses in that particular area where the sundial is today and uh, the Opera House and uh, uh, BMO Harris Bank. Uh, that which was is the, where the Atherton, where the Atherton Hotel yep. stood, yep. is where the center of the city was. So. We're talking, you know, um, from 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 the bridge, you know, before you go to the south of the bridge to uh, maybe Parkway, okay, you know, um, as far west as Jackson Street, maybe, okay, and of course as far east as you know Bowen Street or something like that. Maybe you know I'm, it, that's getting to be a little stretch there, especially on the on the east side, but. Uh, because the, the business district was pretty condensed. Sure, right? sure. Well, um, so back in the 1800s, mm -hmm. you've learned that there was, in fact, a tunnel system here. And where, d did all the tunnels connect? No. Or, so they, they, how many tunnels are we talking about? Well, I don't really know. There um, could be more, is what you're saying? Well, um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it was, it, that part was really hard to investigate. What we do know for sure is you take a block of buildings, let's say um, from Algoma Street, and there's Market Street there, Algoma to the alley, and then the Opera House starts. Because this, you can still see it there today. Sure. Uh, is a basement business area there. You could go into the areaway, go into um, the basement of the building, and then once you're in the basement of the building, you could walk the entire length of the building and come out another area away, like by the alley. So, or you could come out a another open stairwell um, up onto the sidewalk on Market Street. And this was true also, uh, I know for a fact, on um, High Street, Oh, bike land used to be there in front now. It was used to, originally it was an old bank, but I can't think of the name of the shop that there is there now, but you could walk in this area way there, go through the basement business and come up on Commerce Street. Okay. So there's that type of a system going on there. So that's one type of system. And then there's probabilities of maybe a handful of tunnels that actually went across the street possibly. Um, but none of that has actually been, other than the one from the Grand to the uh, Atherton Hotel. Um, I mean, I've actually talked to people that said they were in it, hmm. um, but they weren't aware of any others. Sure. And of course, a lot of the generation that I would have loved to have talked to are, are, are all gone. Yeah, so passed. proving what went across the street here or there was really hard to do. Sure. But there surely was a type of system that you could enter into a... Um, I find it curious that... Um, you know, in the 1800s, when they were building this city, um, their main interest in inducing you to come here and live here and work here was to build business blocks. Okay. So building a business block was very important. And this probably had something to do with why they were allowing entrances from one building to the next in this business block. Sure. We certainly wouldn't do that today. No, uh-uh. And, and almost, I'm really surprised they even did that back in those days. I'm not really sure why. Some of, some of the things are really hard to uh, um, understand. Yeah. Um, but just life was just a lot simpler. People trusted a little bit more. Sure. Although there was theft. And there was enough theft going around in the sure. city. Uh, but building business blocks was the name of the game. And uh, that very... And maybe it's someone had to do with a business block didn't all get up in the same season. They were built one at a time or two at a time or whatever right. it is. Yeah. You know, so uh, you have to think about a lot of those things as you, as yeah. you research and, and whatnot. So there's a lot to think about how all that transpired that way. But uh, uh, it's, it's just it's curious. It, their way of doing things was very different than sure. how we do it today. And businesses well, were small. 
yeah. number one. Oh, yeah, they were. And, yeah. you know, the reason for the tunnels is different for each tunnel. Yes. Um, like, yes. tell us about the, the reason for the tunnel from the Grand Opera mm -hmm. House to Hotel Athern. Well, the Opera House was built first in 1883. The Athern was built, opened in 1891. And um, the Athern Hotel, the, the Opera House had already had major performers that had been there already up to 1891. Um, the Barrymore's parents were there, and, oh, scads of Otis Skinner, a lot of famous people had already been there. So now George Athern wants to build a, a four-story hotel, and it's going to be the other thing about the, our city back in this period is they very much wanted to portray themselves as metropolitan. Hmm. And that was very important for them to, to have the East Coast see that we were metropolitan. Okay. In the, but still in the 1880s, we were considered the far west. Hmm. Wow. And so <laughs> as people were coming from the east out to the west, they brought with them their uh, society, their their uh, their class. They they weren't a bunch of hicks that were just coming out here. Um, people like the Morgans, uh, with that Morgan lumber mill here in in Oshkosh, they came from Wales, England, but they came here in 1833 and were living in New York State for 25 years before they came here. So they were, you know, Easterners. You yeah, know, yeah. I wouldn't. I don't know if I would have said they were Yankees, but they were Easterners. So they were established out there, as a lot of people were. And as the West was opening up, uh, and the great interest to come out here, and um, the prospect of uh, making money, the opportunity sure. was the name of the game. Yeah. Um, they brought with them all the things that they had been accustomed to on the East. So, or if they were for coming from Germany, the Germans here were very cultured people and were known for uh, being unappreciative of the best quality of entertainment that was here. Hmm. They were known for that here in the 1870s, 1880s. Uh, so they were bringing their culture with them and that was important for them. And it was important for them to show the East that we are metropolitan here. Mm -hmm. And they, they wanted that. So um, now the Atherton Hotel is built and it is built with quality and, and beauty. And um, um, so, to see a tunnel between the two would not have been on, uh, uncommon. I think it was could have been very much obviously part of the plan. Famous performers, they can come, stay at the hotel, use the tunnel to go back and forth. Entertainers back in this period in the 1800s, the golden age of theater is 1880 to about 1920, 1921 or something like that, was to not be seen in public. If you, they felt if they were seen too often in public, you wouldn't come to the theater to see them. Hmm. And coming to the That's theater, there were, the theater was not subsidized like it is today. Yeah, yeah. So if people didn't come to the theater, uh, the show didn't get paid, people didn't get paid, the theater itself didn't get paid. So inducing people to come to the theater was all part of getting people to come to the theater. Sure. So um, I have a beautiful article uh, at home talking about you know, famous stars in that day didn't want to be seen in public because they were afraid you wouldn't come see them in public, yeah. you know, to the show. So okay. for them to not be seen was definitely would would have been a big reason to have a tunnel there. And of course, weather. Oh, know, sure. It, yeah. You it, don't it, want to get your costumes yes, wet and correct. soiled and all that. And, and the streets weren't paved like we have today. No. Um, you know, so. They certainly were more so in the 1890s a little bit, yeah. but not like they are today, surely. No. Yeah. No. So, you know, the women's gowns right. would get full of dirt and, sure. you know, there were horses and so. Oh, yeah. Stuff from horses. Oh, sure. Oh, <laughs> you sure. You know, so sure. another good reason, as you said, to have that tunnel. Um, Very much to so. To prevent all that And stuff. later there, there might have been other reasons to have had a time, you know, to, certainly to have used it, yeah. you know, which we, we can talk about or not talk about, but, you know, yeah. it certainly served um, a good purpose at the time, I think. Um, our opera house was um, a very, uh, very much a politan place. Um, in its time, it was an expensive place to go to. It was not cheap okay. to go to the theater um, un until vaudeville came around and then more people could afford vaudeville, 10 cent ticket versus 25 cents. 
wow. was a big deal to that a lot is, of people. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, it was that was a lot of money back then. It was it a lot really of money was. for a lot of people. Correct. Well, my director uh, Daryl Dukacek and I had um, occasion to last October check out uh, some of the areas where these basement businesses were, mm -hmm. and the one that we went to in particular that is in really very good shape is on the corner of Algoma mm -hmm. Boulevard and um, Market Street. Right. Yes. And so we've got some video. Oh, they already started showing it, I guess. Um, so if, if we can just start that over, because I... Want to start it over? <laughs> um, Went a little faster. Okay, so let's, like, what are we seeing? Let's slow it way down so we can actually show uh, and talk um, about what we're seeing while we're seeing it. Well, this little spot here is, is very intriguing, and the, the one thing I want to point out about it, it is very narrow. It is. Um, you know, uh, And the, the stairs are steep. The stairs are steep, and it was very narrow, um, it, it, indicating how much smaller people were uh, not that long ago, really. You know, um, This entrance here is, um, I believe inside is dirt floor and just old stone walls. As we get into some of the other areas, it, that'll make sense more talking about it. So it, it's probably more like a, just a storage area and an exit. Now this is in the alley between the Opera House and um, yeah, um, that block of buildings over there. Uh, so that's a, it's a curious spot and it's just amazing to me that it's still there. It's just amazing to me. Okay. Um, so there's not a great deal of intrigue here uh, with this particular opening. It's too bad we can't, I really don't have, I don't know if I have any pictures in the book of of that space in particular, I think I do, uh, but it was just like you know storage. Sure. It, it appeared yeah. to me, it never fixed up. So we can move on from that, mm -hmm. and um, some of the areas you'll see at, are fixed okay, up. Okay, so areas. now what are we seeing? This is this is the entrance um, right off of right by what is a barber shop there today. Correct. That the image that we the 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 image we saw earlier in the alley there would would be like an exit. Mm -hmm. So you could this would be like an entrance. So uh, to that block. So you could walk down these steps. It's pretty dark down there, but you have three doorways down there. One doorway goes to the uh, faces the basement part of the building. One faces going directly underneath the sidewalk. And then there's a door that goes directly facing underneath the street or faces toward the street. It's underneath the sidewalk, but the sidewalk is very large okay. in that particular All area right. there. So let's move on. Mm -hmm. There we go. There now you we're go. getting That's closer. A, much better. And we can. Now this is down. Mm -hmm. uh, we're uh, we're actually inside here. Correct. Now this is a space that is facing toward the street. And it's a good size space. And you you can't see it, but more on the left there are large windows. I don't know if you can if you have that in. Camera. I'm not sure if he shot He's, those or not. Yeah. There would be, like, in the back there, you can see, like, a, oh, it looks like it could go over to the left there. There are large windows um, that are double hung, and they actually have bars on them. And one thing I want to point out about this, Julie, is, um, I mean, this is, I don't even know how many years old this is, and it's... I mean, look at it. It's very well preserved. Well, the owner of this of the building, um, compared to other spaces that I've seen, the owner of this building has taken very, very good care. And of the this owner area. is um, Dick Nasland, mm -hmm. who he's, owns a lot of property mm -hmm. throughout the city, and, and he's um, taken exceptional care. Yeah, he of this really particular has. Area. Yes, um, he hopes to give tours of this area, hopefully soon down the road, if possible. But the. Uh, the idea of yeah, having let's, let's continue with that video. The idea of having windows in this area um, were for light and ventilation. Now, the just what would be above the window on the sidewalk, if you were standing on the sidewalk, would be openings in the sidewalk mm -hmm. that brought down light and were open and had ventilation, um, almost like your basement windows at home type yeah. of thing. And so years ago, they'd have bars on them so you couldn't break into them yeah. or anything like that. So let's continue the video. This space also had um, prism lights on the side. There you go. There's one of the windows we're talking about. Yep. And they could be opened, and fresh air could come into there. And up above, there would, been, there would have been an opening 
uh, on the sidewalk where the, you know fresh air and light could come down. This is all pre-electric days, yep. this building. And and now, I mean, they can see some red lights there and yep. there's some stuff off to the to the left. It's This is being used as an art studio these days. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure which, you know, if it's any artists or I don't know exactly who the folks are who use it, mm -hmm. um, but um, right. that's what it's being used for. So we can continue with the video then. And um, there, there you, you are, There's Julie. Me. Look, hey, you were providing light from your wow. iPhone. Yep, yeah, right. Um, so right. that we oh could see gosh. one of those windows. <laughs> yep, one of the great windows. They're, they're big, too. Yes, they are. And right above it is like sidewalk, old, it's wood, though, or something up there. Uh, yeah. So it's it's curious. So it's changed. It, it's not in its own. An, the window's in it more in an original form. To say this window is 130 years old, it would probably be ridiculous to say that. It's probably been changed out. Sure. But, um, but it still looks very old. Oh, yeah. It's definitely, you know, the, the, the space of it is authentic, you know. And and I, I, I love the bars on there. I mean, this window is 100 years old, no no question about it. Um, but it, it, it's, it's, and it's the, the space itself has changed uh, definitely from its original purpose, I, I, you know, so it's hard to know exactly what they were using it for. Now, there was a part of the, a wall in that space. I took a contractor down there one day, and he, his first reaction was this wall went out into to the street hmm. further. So it, it is possible that this space may have had a tunnel sure. um, that went across the street there. He felt secure that that it did. The The wall that faces the street is a newer, newer block wall down there today, mm -hmm. but there was a, a part of the old stone wall that he said this went out further into the street. Sure. Without seeing it, it's kind of hard to, yeah. and to know where your bearings are here, but um, this is a real intriguing space. Almost all of the basement businesses were different from each other. Mm -hmm. And um, all used, a lot of them used for a, a, a business or storage or cold sure. storage. Well, let's move on with the video here and see what the next thing is. Okay, yeah. so here's a, another shot yep. of the same space, and now we're standing, you know, to, to the back of it, and you're looking to the entrance way of it, giving the viewer, you know, a good idea of. Um, how, how big it really was. It's mm -hmm. a good space. It's a really good space. And what are we seeing here? Now, the other thing to say about that space is... The, uh, the preceding the space? The preceding space yeah. is that the um, the sidewalk was much different there right than it is today. The sidewalk is 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 big there. It kind of juts out and, and it's big. There's a tree growing in there. So, I mean, it's it's been enlarged, the sidewalk there, but not the space below. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's yeah. kind of, in, that in itself is even more interesting. So a good part of the space has always been out into the street, I believe, you know. Sure. Compared okay. to. Okay, well, let's move on then. Sure. And, um, now, what are we seeing here? Well, we, there should be a part of the video that um, takes us prior to this would be good. This is the, if you were to go down this area way, and now this is the door that goes directly underneath the sidewalk, as if you're going down, walking down Market Street. Okay, and that looks like a, I mean, that looks like a door. It is an extremely old door. Well, the door you see there on the right opens up into that room, and then I think we shut it, if I remember correctly, and then there's a hallway there. But then, um, as you get into the room, I'm a little lost. Um, yeah, I'm let's continue here. with the video, and maybe we can see more of what. Um, so I'm thinking. Well, no, nope, we're in a boiler. different area now. No, actually, it's the same area, but it's just off to the side of it. Yeah. So it's the same area, but. Um, but there was a nice there was a nice uh, picture in there of a, a door that led you into that room from underneath the basement. So again, yeah. how you could see how you it could may travel be, the basement. Um, he may have shot it as we were leaving or something. I'm not sure. Oh, could be. Um, could but be. this is obviously the boiler system mm -hmm. yep. um, for uh, the businesses that do exist there. And um, there's no more basement businesses anymore, but um, right. uh, there are businesses above ground. And see, so you're seeing new block wall there, too, so things mm -hmm. have been modified um, down in these More spaces. examples of Dick uh, Naslin taking care of the property. Mm -hmm. and, Very much so. And, yep. and, you know, keeping it up, trying right. to preserve it. Right, which is what he's doing, especially with that space in particular. Right. He's really right. very interested in doing that. Now, that that door there opens up to an old coal bin, which is directly underneath the sidewalk. 
up above. The door to the left there is the entrance into this space. It, it, it's like a little hallway tunnel okay. there from uh, for how you get into it, uh, which is intriguing um, to see. So now you, you're coming down the hallway as you came down the basement staircase. You come down this hallway and you come into this room and then there that door opens up into a coal bin. Uh, there was also an old oil bin in there, okay. which came later, you know. Um, the city does want to kind of fill that space in in particular. And um, why do they want to, this space right here that yeah, we're looking at, yeah. why do they want to fill it in? Well, they're talking, they're, we met with them, Dick and I, and, and they're talking about possibly letting him um, preserve a good, most of the space. But a couple of spaces that kind of need to go are like the old coal bin, they're, they're just, um, they're, I don't. I, I think they just want to make sure that the sidewalk is is secure. Okay. Um, in so particular, they're these, looking at it from a safety standpoint. It, 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 some of it, yeah. The if there's a fire or something, the fire trucks have to come up on these spaces. You know, can, okay. can this hollow area contain that type of thing? So that's kind of the dilemma with some of these things. Well, plus, up on the sidewalk level, there's a there's a coal hole. There yeah. with a yeah, that's true. There is. All you have to do is open it up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's not, that, it's not that you're inside the building, but you yeah. can open it up and and you could fall into it. You could hurt yourself or something like that. Very true. Mm -hmm. uh, well, let's move on and see what we have next on this video. God, it's been so long since we shot this. Right. It's been like six months see, since we shot this. There's video. a door that you can see there, right mm -hmm. on the right, and that door is uh, goes into just another part of the basement, and all of these spaces in this particular block of buildings have that in their basement. Mm -hmm. You know, and the door is ancient. I mean, it is it is as old as a building, just about. Part of this building is 1873, I think. Wow. Um, I'm not 100% sure if it, this section is, but I, I think it might be. So this is an old block uh, in particular. Okay. Uh, it goes back a long, long way. So let's see what Daryl has next for us here. Oh yeah, there's a great stamp in the sidewalk of, um, I, I think it's a stamp uh, av uh, advertising the manufacture of pavement lights. And you can see the line, the dark line above, mm -hmm. that was all open and that brought light and ventilation hmm. down into the basement. And there were, there were bars there so people couldn't you know fall into it or something couldn't yeah, fall into it yeah. it's it's cemented in now sure. it's a i don't know maybe two feet by a foot and a half or something like that or or whatever but that whole space up there would have been open and there's the nice um nice stamp in the sidewalk yeah. so old and it's still sitting there yeah um, and it's, it's you great. know still i mean if if we had if we had zoomed in even closer we could probably read a good portion of, of oh, what it said. I know exactly what it says. All I have oh, to do is look in the book okay. here. I, well, I, we'll, as while we, you're looking, we're going to move on to the next part of this video. Sure. And um, and see what we have here. It's great. Here we go. So what are we seeing here? Now Julie? we're in another section of um, we're in another section of uh, this basement area. And this one is is terribly intriguing. This isn't necessarily a great shot of it. It'd be a better shot if they showed the entrance to it. The entrance to this shot is on the sidewalk level, on the street level, sidewalk level. It was, there also was a door that went into this space also from into the basement, um, but it's a great, the, the opening on the sidewalk level is really terrific. And look at the wall. I mean, look at the texture of that. Well, if we can Well, just... there is a great shot of it. Yeah. So there's another door that goes into the space that we originally saw with the stairway in the alley. Mm -hmm. That door opens up into that space. But here, this is the point about it. Here we're seeing old wainscoting and plaster wall. So we know that this room was fixed up. We know that there was a business in this area. It wasn't just, it wasn't just dirt floor and old stone, field stone, um, mm -hmm. and there's a the big difference between the two. Sure. Big difference between the two. So, the the beauty of this space that is fun to talk about is um, Castle Printer was in this space. 
and he is the one that probably did this fixing up in this hmm. area here. So uh, at that time, it wasn't Castle Pierce Printing. Correct. Then? It was not. It was or, just Castle. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of something else. I'm no, thinking. you're no, you're. Am it, I? Yes. It, it's, it's, it's the same uh, okay. business. Pierce came a little bit later. That's but right. But this is the beginning yep. of ca of Castle. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to jump forward here. There's to, even the bathroom in this spot. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so this this is obviously not a basement business. We shot some of this video because this is one of the businesses that exists up above. Above, correct. Um, some of the things that we've been looking correct. at here, and um, they. You'll have to tell the story, um, Julie. They fixed this up, and they got some kind of uh, wasn't it the. Um, Acanthus Ward or something. Oh, sure. Okay. I, I think okay. they did receive an award. Lovely. There's, um, I believe, if memory serves me correctly, there's a beautiful shot somewhere in here of the ceiling. Um, the old tin ceiling. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. And you, you can see the floors have been, um, beautiful floors, you know, yeah. just, I mean, that was so classic of floors back then. It, it was, and yet what's nice, what's in, uh, to me, interesting to talk about is that it's a, it's a simple space. There were just small businesses back in the day uh, in these spaces, very small. A little insurance company. Um, I think there was a veterinarian in this little area Holy at one cow. time. Um, so they're not. They weren't fancy places. They were just a business. And now they're they're beautifully restored. Um, yes, they are. It's lovely. Uh, and, old and I think brick he wall does, there too. Um, it's it's so pretty. Yeah, I think he does have a shot here coming up of of the ceiling. So um, the old tin ceilings. We still have quite a few of them around the city. Yeah, that's some more of the brick. Yeah, that's great. That's Clearly, just great. this is a a beauty salon. Mm -hmm. There's the there ceiling. It is. Yeah, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they did win an award. I can't recall offhand. What the award was? It's probably the Canthus Award, probably. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. I think that is right. Um, so if we can move along here, because we've got um, I don't know. I think we're pretty much coming to the end of the video. Uh, maybe we can just let it run a little bit here. What's fun to talk about this uh, block of businesses is that the very first business today in in the space on Algoma and and Market is a printer. Oh. And what's great about it is that. One of the very first businesses in that space was, was Castle Printer. Yeah, yeah. And I think he actually has yeah. some of his print his things, his his um, things that he printed with. Actually, sure. Yeah, sure. it's 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 fun. It's ironic. I've been in his shop. It's really it's really cool. <laughs> it's really cool. <laughs> well, there are some very interesting businesses that are there right yes. now, and um, you know, it's just amazing. I'd never even thought about some of these businesses that are right. there. Not the hair salon so much, but um, there's, isn't there like a vintage dress shop there or something oh, right there now? there could have been. There, boy, um, there's, I know some of the things that have been there. Correct. The Ladies League was right on the corner there by the alley for years and years yeah. they were there. Um, yeah, the salon is there. Printer is there. The barbershop, he's been there. There's that, It's been a barbershop for... Forever, it seems. For eons of time. Yeah. yeah for a long, long time. Well, now we've got some photos too, and and I want to get to those. Um, but first, uh, let's let's take a look. We've got the old National Bank building, and um, part of that was used. Can we see that, please? There we go. Mm -hmm. um, part of that was used in. Is that the bank? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to tell. Um, part of that was used in the Public Enemies movie. Correct. Um, when That's, well, the spot was that. Not that particular, ba that bank has been torn down, and that bank in particular that we're seeing in this photograph. There's been five banks on that spot. Yeah, and and none mm -hmm. of them have lasted for some reason. No, they haven't. Um, but, um, and they did shoot some exterior things in this area as well for that movie. Um, well, what's curious about this, um, we, now you see really a really good shot of business blocks, a business mm -hmm. block, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So now you have the bank here, and the bank had a variety of things going on in that bank, in the basement and everywhere else. And that's what it was all about. Sure. Uh, was business, giving a people a reason to come here and to live here. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, we've got some other historical photos that I want to um, See, there's kind the of run through to that. here. Yep. There's, there's a lovely entrance to that uh, 
basement area there on, on Market Street. It's really intriguing. My goodness, how could you not be intrigued by that? Right? Yeah, for sure. And there, you see those windows on the right there as you go down? Mm -hmm. That was a bathroom. Oh, wow. That was a, a bathroom at one time. Okay, next. Okay, what there's are we the looking? same thing coming, going in, and going out. Okay, mm -hmm. next. Okay. Yeah, there's some more of the some more of the same. Market Street. The, the 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 bottom picture is is the sp What you're looking at the bottom picture is the space going underneath the basement of the building, the very first door when you go into that area way. So you go into the open that door in that area way there, and then you're in that little room down, down underneath there. Okay, all right. Let's take a look at yeah. this one. Now, this is kind of interesting. Well, that is the, this is so intriguing about it, so much fun. This is a, this, that spot on Market Street where you went down, and we just saw it a few minutes ago. But that's how you open it, it's a trap door in the sidewalk. You have to open that, then you had to push open that other thing and hinge it, to walk down yeah. in there, it was just well, the first time I saw it, I just couldn't believe it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I don't know that I remember those days, but I certainly, well, you know, we've seen things mm -hmm. like that in movies and and so forth, and it is incredibly, um, I, I think, unique, Very. and and forward thinking for that time. Now, in the city's history. Correct. Now, this this little spot there was has been very modified. From its original use, there would have been iron bars mm -hmm. around it, or on at least two sides of it. Surely, the the paneling that's on there now is much later than the 1800s, and the trap door might not have been on it either. Probably not. It was actually the steps would have been open, and maybe there would have been a door at the bottom of the steps sure. that you went into. So, um, so it it uh, it's been modified uh, considerably from its original um, use. Very okay. covered over that you wouldn't even. Yeah. All right, Think let's move on it. and see what we have here. There's the Athern. Yep, there's the Hotel Athern. And this is, in this spot, is where BMO Harris is today. Correct. Correct. Now, the, the Civil War monument that you see there is still in the same spot today. Yes, and, and mm -hmm. I have some, some pictures of that a little bit later. Um, so let's move on then. There it is, too, in the Grand Opera House. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. the Grand Opera House, and above it is the Hotel Atherin again. Yeah, and again, once the Atherin was built, the city um, felt very strongly that um, it was the pride of the city. They were so proud of it. Sure. And um, it was the center of the city, the center business district of the city. What, before the monument was there, there was a, a bandstand that stood there. Hmm. And uh, the Orion Orchestra, very famous orchestra here in Oshkosh, um, played. There was a, a very lovely stone foundation that had a, that was arched, and uh, there was a drinking fountain underneath it. And then there was a very delicate um, iron, wrought iron, railing and canopy, and they would perform up there. Sure. For for the public free. How fascinating. Okay, let's let's take a look at our next photo here. That is the, the, the block of buildings that we have been investigating here all this time. Mm -hmm. And again, that's on the corner of uh, Market and... Mm -hmm. um, in, in Algoma Street. Yep, and mm -hmm. this is a shot right here mm -hmm. on the left right. is um, part of the Grand Opera House. Correct. Correct. And then you've got the alley. Yep. And then there's that business, that block of businesses um, yes. that we have today. Mm -hmm. All right, next. There it is in, um, I wish, you know, it's, it, what was so mysterious about doing some of this research is I find a picture that was very old of this area, but there'd be a shadow on what I really needed to see. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so this picture in particular, so there again is Algoma and Marcus Street. The buildings are still there. Uh, right over to the right there, you can see where Manila Restaurant is there. So, you know, the, the buildings are all still there. And then you can see Market Street, where you see that kind of a, that rectangle shadow there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is Market Street. And the area was, I wish you could see it so much better because the area way had, had, was different originally than it is today. Sure. And, uh, but of course, again, um, when I really needed 
to have a really good shot and the only shot of something that old in that area there'd have to be a shadow yeah, there yeah. so you, Isn't it that was always the way made it hard a lot harder <laughs> too so we tried to enlarge it in the book so that you could you know maybe get a better idea of it here's um what are we looking at here this is right across the street from the grand opera house and um I'm trying to think what's in there right now um it was an insurance office for a long time. It was Art Ray Bynes' insurance office for a yeah. long time. Okay, let's move on. This is one of the. This is the oldest basement business uh, that I have in the book from I think 1865. Uh, this building is no longer standing. Uh, it was built entirely of brick, I think, after one of the big fires, early fires in the 1860s. Um, but right on the left there, you see that stair. Well, that, stair, that that staircase that goes up. Well, there was an area way right below it there on the sidewalk level, and there was a barber um, down in there, an African American barber, by the way. Wow. Um, down in that area, and okay. uh, I wish you could see it. I don't know if the, the viewers will be able to see it real well, but on the front of the building, you can see all different kinds of advertisements. There's an attorneys in there. There's a dentist in there. So you, again. Uh, you know, business blocks was the name of the game, and mm -hmm. these business, these buildings housed all kinds of different small businesses in their day. Okay, let's go to the next one. This is, I guess, part of an alley. No, or this is, is um, this is under a sidewalk on Main and Merritt Street, and they really have done a good job today of filling the majority of it in. But there's still a large section that's not. Um, I this said was alley, a, I meant tunnel. Is mm -hmm. this part of a tunnel system? It is not a part of a not. tunnel okay. system. It's, it's, actually, um, it's actually underneath the sidewalk, but I think this is partly underneath the building itself. I think these are rooms underneath the building of that area itself, the bent block, okay. where okay. The, the, the Democratic Party has their, in the, in the bent, bent block on, on Main and Merritt Street. Okay. That's what this area here is. Okay. That's All where right. it's located. Here we go. Here it's, we go. This is Monument Square again. Yes. Just a different view. All right. And now today we still have tunnels today. This is. Uh, mm. Well, I wanted to talk for just a moment if we can go back to um, the four, picture fourteen. I wanted to um, talk for just a moment. There we go. Thank you about that monument. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us just real briefly, Julie, about that monument, because it was a gift to the city. It was, and I think by Colonel Hicks. Yep. Um, it was placed there in 1907, and the city had a huge celebration over it. The city um, was very civic. They were very patriotic, um, and they had a, a, a huge celebration. I'm going to quote from your book here. Um, you say in your book, it is an imposing group of three bronze figures mm -hmm. represented at the height of action in battle. And it actually rests, as you say on the book, on a base of rare granite. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that in the book you talk about what each one of the figures is, is doing as part mm -hmm. of his, uh, the role that he played in, in battle. But um, yes, that was a gift from Colonel John Hicks to the city. Um, okay, so let's go on to um, the next picture then, which is picture 15. Now, this is a tunnel that went from um, the old Mercy Hospital Correct. that's across the street from Menominee Park. It's now become something different. But this was a tunnel that went from the hospital to they had a college of nursing Correct. or a school of nursing. I don't know what the official name was, mm -hmm. but they had a tunnel running from the hospital to the college of nursing. And now, you know, now this makes some sense, correct? So here's a, a much later example of a, of a tunnel. Um, now, the Thursday College is not that far from Mercy, from the hospital itself. Right, I mean, right. they could easily have walked over there um, just as easily as they could from the Grand to the Atherin, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, but here, the necessity of uh, putting a tunnel in for in inclement weather and, sure. and that type of thing just made so much more sense. This is a long tunnel. Do yeah. you do you know? Does this tunnel still exist today? I don't think so. Um, they no, we're not ready for that one yet. Th they there tore down go. the uh, the nursing college, and I would imagine they probably have done a lot to have maybe filled this in. Uh, I'm not 100 percent sure of that. I, I was 
very happy that I was able to get these pictures of it before uh, they did that because they really changed the whole area there now with the with making them to apartments and making uh, the old Mercy Hospital into uh, living quarters as well. Yep. So whether they kept this, I'm not sure. I I wouldn't. It wouldn't really serve a purpose. Well, I I don't know if there would serve a purpose for maintenance. Possibly. Hard to say. Um, that tunnel is in very good shape. So um, it'd be. I should really investigate to see if they if they kept it or sure, not. Sure. Sure. Um, um, we're running out of time, and so let's take a look at our our so next talk um, couple of photos. Now this is. And um, we're going to stay on this one for just a moment here. Um, this, this is a great tunnel that yeah, still tell exists. tell us about this, this one. This one still exists today. This is from the courthouse to the safety building. And it's a very long tunnel. Oh, it's from the courthouse to the safety building. Yes, yes. Which, which is the police department, which right. back years ago was the, the county jail. Right. If you can right. imagine that. I mean, it's so small right. compared to the size of our jail today. So, so that ran underground then from the safety building, yep. underground Jackson's, mm. across Jackson Correct. Street, to the courthouse. And they used it for possibly maintenance, but for transporting inmates, I would assume? Transporting inmates, absolutely. And then between the courthouse and there's another building right next to the courthouse, which I can't think of. There's a little tunnel there, too. It's, and that's our next picture, yeah. um, if we can oh, look at that. Oh, what is the name of that the, building? It's the Orrin King building. The Orrin King building. That is this next is, to the courthouse. Right. This is the one that's still, the one from the safety building to the courthouse is very lengthy, and that's still what you're looking at here. Okay. Um, so, I don't know. I thought that this was the one, mm -hmm. yeah, I thought that that was the one, um, from the courthouse to the Orrin King building, nope. which that's the tunnel that I've been in. And I don't know if I've been in the tunnel f in the other one. Um, I mean, the picture, I, you know, without looking in my book here, so um, I'd have to kind of look and see here. Oh, here we go. Um, let's see if we can get out, because I know we're pressed for time here right now. So we'll just stay on this photo for a moment here. So. Okay, here. Uh, no, nope, that's still the that's still the Winnebago County Courthouse tunnel. Okay, so that's still the tunnel from yes. the courthouse to the to the what is now the safety building. It was right. then the jail. Yeah, and the, like so. the next one. This one is for the tunnel from the courthouse okay, to yep, the. Okay, I don't have that one. Yeah, we don't have that so. one on here. A lot nicer look. Or so, yep. nicer so I mean, it's just, I can't believe that our time has passed oh, so we could quickly. We could easily spend talk hours, hour. at mm -hmm. least. Um, but are you planning on writing another book? I'd love to, but very, very much so. Um, writing a book is really hard. It's a lot, a lot of work. Um, but it's really challenging, and it's completely rewarding. Um, but being a business owner really takes up a huge majority sure. of my time it's really Absolutely. hard it's yeah. really hard to to it's almost impossible for me to do anything yeah and you're trip. not single anymore like you were right I'm you not single anymore and so, yeah, so, I've got, yeah and I work at quick trip and I, <laughs> I do a couple of different things too <laughs> so but, yeah um, but you know what I think would make a good book and um, I mean I think it would certainly I would certainly buy it would be one just on the Grand Opera House. Yes, it'd be great. It'd be and, great. you know, the stories, yeah. the performers. Um, and I know we didn't get to spend a whole lot of time on this, and now we're less than a minute. Are there ghosts in the Grand Opera House? I think so. Okay. I, I, I think so. I've talked to several people when I was doing my book, and people that, I, that aren't fanciful in imagination and thought, and, you know, and you wouldn't say silliness, I mean, from older people to other people. And some of the things that they say line up with some of the fact about the grant itself. Okay. Well, I so. think you should write a book. I do, too. Anyway, thank you so much for being here. I also want to thank um, Dick and Nels Nasland and their crew for allowing us the opportunity to go in and, and shoot some, some of the video. And I want to thank Daryl uh, Dukacek, our director. Um, you know, he's not directing tonight, but he shot all that video, and um, he's not with us tonight. But, Daryl, our, so our prayers and our thoughts go out to you, and uh, you just get well soon. Uh, but Ian is here, and he's done a great job directing tonight. So Absolutely. I want to thank you. I want to thank the Naslins. I want to thank Daryl and the crew, and as always, you. We'll see you next time. Until then, take care. Keep your eye on us. We've got our eye on Oshkosh.